What's up dudes and dudettes, it's Nara Carson for the long box and it's the final week of Nostalgia Month. Okay, enough being a 90s douchebag. I did that just to entertain you. You're welcome. Next they're gonna make you wear a fucking dress. It's coming someday. Alright. So for the last week of Retro Month or Nostalgia Month, uh, we have one new comic to review. You already know what I'm gonna say about this one, people. Yeah. But I'm gonna review it anyway. And for some actually good comics, Pokemon the First Movie! Issue 2. Uh, Digimon Digital Monsters from Dark Horse, Issue 9, and the original Mirage series of TMNT, Issue 31. So, let's get started with the inferior Spider-Man. So basically, Doc Ock, as Spider-Man, has got himself an entire army, he's built giant walking spider tripods, just go with it. And he has invaded Team Pin's stronghold in New York known as Shadowland. Populated by a bunch of hand ninjas, the Hobgoblin and the Kingpin. Needless to say, shit goes down, Spidey kills a bunch of ninjas, and... Uh, blows up buildings. Uh, when did my beloved Volk Horror turn into a Michael Bay comic? I don't know. Um, yeah, you people know how I feel about this, and I gotta say, the new costume it's shit. I don't like it. Go back to red and blue. And, you know, no, I don't want to, uh, you know, rag on Hubert Ramos, the uh, artist for this issue, but just by the cover, it looks like he went to the Rob Liefeld School of Anatomy. And, you know, the art really isn't that good. It's it's subpar for a for even for, like, Marvel comics. So, I'd say... Bargain bin. If you see it for like 50 cents, pick it up. You might have fun. <clears throat> now moving on to Pokemon. Pokemon, I choose you! You all know this one. Remember the first movie? Me, you two bitches, my favorite. So we all know what happens. Bunch of scientists find the ancient fossil of Mew, clone Mewtwo, he goes crazy, blows up their shit, and... Yeah, so, this skips ahead to the middle of the movie where we actually get to meet Mewtwo. And of course, Ash is, you know, not an idiot because he wasn't an idiot back in the 90s. Uh, Pikachu gets whacked around a little bit by Mewtwo. Um, the weird lady turns out to be Nurse Joy, who was under the control of Mewtwo, who helped him create his cloning programs. And you know how this goes. There's Pokemon battles, Mewtwo's a douche. You know, it's Pokemon. I mean, how could you not love it? I mean. Do I have to sing the Pokemon theme song, or can we just put in a clip? Yeah, okay. CG, I'll put in a clip, because I'm not singing again after the power of this thing. So, come on, people. Pokemon. I don't even have to tell you to go out and buy it now. You probably already have gone to torrent it. Next we have Digimon Digital Monsters, issue 9. Champions. I always thought they were saying garlic champions in that theme song when I was like five. I couldn't understand lyrics, okay? So in Sub Zero Ice Punch, um, basically Ty and Agumon have ended up on the island heading towards Infinity Mountain thanks to that creep Devimon. Uh, Ty's clothes are frozen, he takes them out of the ice. Agumon ropes them up, he's ready to go. Then they meet Rigimon, the big polar bear snowman Digimon, who has a black gear in his back. Because if you all remember the first season, those are what made the good Digimon go crazy. So, yeah. And also there's a subplot with um, Matt and Gabumon trying to find TK because they landed on another part of the island and the island is constantly moving. So now they're trying to find all their friends and it's not exactly proving easy. Um, the artwork, well it's basically just like they traced over the animations of the show, but it actually looks decent. and. You know, they make all this, the digi puns, as I like to call them, you know, those dumb jokes that they would make in every season. But we love them for it because it was hilarious when we were kids. And 
I'm just surprised that Digimon comics actually exist. Like, if you haven't read these, go out and buy them, because it's Digimon. I mean, it's it'll probably be easier than trying to look up all the old episodes on YouTube, because somebody probably removed them! And finally, issue 31 of Eastman and Laird's Teenage Muted Ninja Turtles. I'm not gonna sing the theme song. Uh, as you can see by the cover art, Splinter and the Turtles look strikingly different than what we're used to seeing, but that's actually a good thing. The art in this issue kicks fucking ass, seriously. Whoever drew this, like, I forget the name, but this guy kicks ass at art. I'm surprised he's not working anymore, or maybe he is. I just don't, maybe I haven't read any of his recent work. But seriously. Okay, so plot-wise, Shredder starts attacking Splinter psychically in his head with some sort of weird elixir in a teacup. Ancient Japan goobly gook. That's what turtles are known for. So anyway, um, Splinter and Shredder go at it mentally, and then Splinter's like, oh, my sons, my dear beloved children, come to me, aid me. And then they go out into the wintry wilderness, and they have a fight with the foot soldiers, you know, I think... It's, it's pretty fucking brutal, this fight, because back in these days, the turtles were... They didn't fuck around. Uh, like, I think one of them, I can't... They never actually named them, but, and I can't really tell them apart by the weapons, because it looks like they're all carrying swords in this particular story. But one of them gets their fucking hand chopped off. Like, it's, it's fucked up. It's brutal, and it's awesome, but it's fucked up. So I'd say, go out and buy this now, because... Holy shit. Ninja Turtles, cutting off people's arms. What more could you ask for? So, uh, this is, oh, wait, this is Noah for the Long Box Nostalgia Month, Peace, dude.